Welcome. This video demonstrates the metadata governance using the Visible Analyst Enterprise Edition. Questions often raised about metadata management are, can I work from a standard definition of my data? Who last updated this data and where else is it used? Who relies on the metadata throughout my organization? What rules are established around a particular metadata object? Who has authorization over the metadata and how can it be changed? Which applications, modules, etc. are being driven from a standard definition? The key issues addressed by visible governance are semantic analysis. Can I derive standard data definitions from a business glossary and link the definitions to an enterprise-wide architecture? Impact analysis. Can I see which part of the metadata is impacted by a change in my requirements? Who changed it? When was it changed? Why was it changed? Transparency analysis. Does everyone understand how metadata can be dynamically viewed in the repository? Where is it being used and in which models? Set up visible governance in five steps. One, create the business glossary using user-defined objects and attributes. Two, capture metadata from the source systems. Three, maintain updates to the repository through the append and schema comparison feature. Four, visualize and reuse metadata in model-based formats. Five, publish to the web for viewing and commenting. Key issues address the semantic analysis. Can I derive the standard data definitions from a business glossary and link the definitions to an enterprise-wide architecture? Visible Solution will use the strategic planning statements to define the business glossary. Here we see the visible analyst with the strategic planning statement hierarchy displayed. As the product of the planning phase, planning statements communicate the business, vision, and rules that govern the organization. In this demo project, the Division of Motor Vehicles, DMV, we set up an example of a business glossary using planning statements comprising of a number of definitions. Driver's license applications, driver's license, driver's license evaluator, and driver's license test. A statement hierarchy can be created whereby the higher level statements may contain substatements. For example, we can see the following glossary breakout for the DMV. They include customer, driver's license, application, driver's license evaluator, driver's license test, learner's permit, medical restriction codes, etc. Notice you can create as many levels as you need for the glossary definitions. Here we break out the medical restriction codes and define what each code represents inside of the business glossary. The business glossary metadata. When capturing or defining an item in the business glossary, it is important to define as much of the metadata as possible about the item. This includes a detailed description of the item, notes, priority, and a short description. Later we will add the data stewardship roles and responsibilities. When you capture all of the metadata belonging to an item in your business glossary, we can read the import from pre-designated and authorized sources, be it in SQL, NoSQL, text, XLS, Docs, etc. By defining the business glossary as a type of planning statement, you are able to integrate the glossary into the software development lifecycle with links to the model objects, be it entities, attributes, processes, classes, etc. This ensures that each model object is cross-referenced to the glossary, thereby promoting standard naming conventions. In our example, we can see that the standard definition of a driver's license is used in at least two other areas of our product, the driver's license used as a class and a driver's license used as a data flow. Note that in the visible analyst, classes can be used on an entity diagram and entities can be used on a class diagram. By clicking on the respective location tab entries in the repository, models can be viewed immediately. Here the driver's license glossary entry references the class on an entity diagram and the data flow on the data flow diagram. Another issue addressed by visible governance is impact analysis. Can I see which part of the metadata is impacted by a change in my requirements? Who changed it? When was it changed? 
Why was it changed? The visible solution is to define user-defined attributes, including user-defined pick lists, to capture the metadata requirements. You could set up user-defined objects and user-defined attributes to track which part of the data is impacted by the change. User-defined objects. This feature allows the user-defined objects to be linked to any repository object and reference other objects within the composition field of the user-defined object. You can then produce an association matrix report depicting the linkage between the objects. User-defined attributes allows you to extend the visible analyst repository. These new fields, called user-defined attributes, can be defined or selected from a pick list in a project's repository, allowing you to extend the information that can be stored with a repository object. The field information that can be stored include name, type, and length. The values defined can include text, date, money, serial, float, user-defined types, etc. The next several slides explain how to create the user-defined objects and attributes for data governance. In this example, we will use the licensing department function. This action sets up roles, more specifically governance roles, that is, information governance director, database administrator, data steward, data analyst, as a user-defined attribute for the organization's functions. This action sets up person assigned to the governance role as defined previously, information governance, database administrator, data steward, data analyst for the organization's functions. Now you can clearly see that for the licensing department there are four roles, information governance director, database administrator, data steward, and data analyst. You can also see David Jones is the information governance director and is responsible for setting the governance policy for the licensing department. Defining the user defined attribute involves entering a name, type, length, items if defining a pick list, and a used by value. Enter the collection list by clicking the dot 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 button and check allow multiple selections if applicable. The used by default value is all. User defined attributes and user defined objects can also be added automatically as new project defaults when a new project is created. You may have up to 100 user-defined attributes for each type of object in the repository. Another key issue addressed is transparency analysis. Does everyone understand how metadata can be dynamically viewed in the repository? Where is it being used and in which models? The visible solution is to produce reports as HTML, including the diagram images, PDF, text, etc., to disseminate the information to the appropriate stakeholders. You can allow users to view the models and repository entries as read-only using the Visible Viewer application. These users have the ability to generate reports and print the models. Numerous queries are available to see who is responsible for specific governance activities, which includes a cross-reference to the information architecture where these activities are referenced. You can publish the project to a secure cloud-based server for viewing and collaboration. The Visible Analyst Enterprise Data Governance Edition is available for a trial license by contacting us at support at visible.com or call 781-778-0200. Additional information is found on our website at www.visible.com. Thank you.